Hello, it's Dr. Alan Yim. Today I'm going to show you how to analyze common chord modulation when it modulates from a minor key to the relative major. Here you see a Bach chorale, and the first thing I would do is play through it and figure out what key it's in, or just look at it maybe. And in this case, you could look at it and you could see that the first chord is an A minor chord and the key signature looks like A minor, so we might guess that this is going to be an A minor. And looking a little bit forward and playing the opening, you need not go any farther because you can see right here, this is five, six, and this is one. It's a one and then an E over G sharp and then one again, and you can hear the key. And I think you would sing, if I asked you to sing Do, you sing Do, and that would be it. Okay, then we go on. I'll just play. There, you might go, well, what happened? Because we're ending on a G major chord. And this is what the, that I mean by minor going to major. It's so common to switch back and forth so that G should not come as a shock, but you should just realize that, hey, that's the dominant of the relative major. And then we go on. Immediately goes back to 5-1. part in the middle and I wouldn't call this a modulation because it's too short. This this little bit here where we see it kind of tonicizing sort of hinting at C major. It actually doesn't tonicize C because it never goes to C but we get the dominant there in C and then it goes back to one. So we're staying in the key of A minor so far. Now I'm going to go on. Um, when you do your analysis it's a good idea to always look at the cadences. So in a Bach chorale, it's easy to spot the cadences because they're at the fermatas. And at these points, you can kind of clearly see the uh, type of cadence it is. So in the key of, of A minor, this would be a half cadence. This here is another half cadence. We expect half cadences because these are not at major points of the chorale. At the very, very end, of course, we can see we have the Picardy third with an A major, and we expect five to come before that, and sure enough, there is E7, it goes like this. Okay, so that's the end, so typical. Now, what happens between that half cadence and the PAC at the end? Well, we have a couple more phrases. Let me play the, the three opening phrases of the second part. So this is after the double bar. And there's that half cadence. This time in the key of C. This time it really does sound like we're going into the key of C. And you might notice that we have um, a G natural here. So when you have a G natural, and it, and it keeps staying G natural for a while, um, we've moved away from the harmonic minor. It's no longer tonicizing. We have, so here's the alto from that second phrase. So it looks like we actually kind of did a secondary five of five. After that bar. So there we have a little bit of a tonicization already. So 5 6, uh, sorry, 5 4 2 to 1 6. Two, it looks like we're, okay, it looks like we're in C, right? Again, another half cadence, but all of this is in the key of C. All right. So somewhere between here, at the beginning of this line, and this half cadence, we have a modulation. And it seems to be going here, because these, these next two phrases are definitely um, in the key of C. So where does it happen, and how do you find this spot? Let's take a look. Okay, I'm going to start at the beginning of the line again in the key of A minor. And there's 
there's the half cadence. It hasn't happened yet because we just get we just reconfirmed five one. All right. So you're looking for the spot where it starts sounding like it's in C major. This looks like five one, right? So the five there, this um, this G major chord, that's kind of unlikely to be seven three. But the problem is, and when you're in minor and you go to a relative the related key, there's no really the only accidental change is seven. So I'm going to call that highlighted G natural there. I'm going to call that the non-diatonic chord. And so I'm going to back up one from that chord. So I'm going to back up one from that five chord and see if the chord before functions as a pivot chord. So here we go. I'm going to take my green pen and I'm going to try to make this into the pivot chord. So yes, it's one in the key of A minor. The reason it doesn't sound so fantastic, I mean, so fantastically smooth is we don't expect six, five, right? It looks like there's a chord missing in between. It looks like maybe there's a two chord and that, that could have gone between that six and that five chord. Six, five. It's not the smoothest thing, but that's what he did. Okay, so here we, here's from the beginning again of that line. And there's that half cadence. So, right as soon as you hear that G major, that G, oh, that G natural, it starts sounding brighter right away. Um, you could try it out yourself, you could try to see if there's a way to put a two chord in there that sounds good, and I'm talking about down here, I'll, I'll show you where, I, where I'm trying to insert this too. I'm trying to put it here, 6, 2, 5, 1. Um, but it, it's going to be a little bit challenging given the way he wrote it. You would have to rewrite the bass line and it would it would really ch upset the contour of this section. Okay, thanks for listening and I hope this helps you to understand common chord modulation from a minor key into the relative major and how to discover where the pivot chord or the common chord can be found. Thanks for watching.